Hi boys and girls of grade 6, I am Miss Martina Archer Sample and today we will be looking at invertebrates. Remember our last lesson we looked at vertebrates? Right, and today we're going to look at invertebrates. Now after this lesson, we should be able to define invertebrates and we should be able to provide characteristics of invertebrates and also identify them. Right, so get out your notebooks, put on your listening ears, and let's begin. Invertebrates. Invertebrates are almost everywhere. In fact, at least 95% of all the animals in the world are invertebrates. Yes. Do you know the one thing that all of them have in common? They do not have backbones yes invertebrates do not have backbones invertebrates can be found flying swimming crawling or floating and provide important things to the environment and to people yes to us human beings no one knows just how many different kinds of invertebrates exist but there are millions of invertebrates. Right, so let us find out about some of the most common ones. Arthropods. Arthropods, what did I say? Yes, the arthropods. Arthropods have segmented bodies, meaning they are divided into parts. Think of an ant. Yes, an ant have segmented bodies. These arthropods are the largest group of invertebrates. They can live on land like spiders and insects or in water like crayfish and crabs. Insects are the largest groups of arthropods. So, of course, many even fly like the mosquitoes, bees, locusts, and ladybugs. They have jointed legs or limbs to make it easier to walk just as you and I have knees for our legs and elbows for our arms. Yes, most arthropods also have an ex Hornal skeleton, or we say ex exoskeleton. What we say, exoskeleton, which is a tough outer skin or shell that protects their body. Creepy crawly insects. Now, any part of the biggest course of the arthropod, which is itself the biggest of the animal. Creepy crawlers have segmented bodies, jointed legs, and outside skeletons or exoskeletons. Creepy crawlers or creepy crawlies are recognized from other arthropods by their body, which is isolated into three major regions. And the three major regions is the head, the head which bear the mouth parts, eyes, and a pair of antenna, or we say feelers. Then we have the three segmented, we have the thorax, which usually has three pairs of legs. In adults, and usually one or two pairs of wings. Three. The many segmented abdomen, which contains the digestive 
excretory and reproductive organ and here we have a diagram showing you a wasp or an ant here we have dragonfly stonefly we have the walking stick we have cat flea right we have the beetles we have stink bug we have cabbage butterflies mosquitoes all of these are or arthropods they are eight-legged creatures eight-legged creatures any part of the arthropod group that includes spiders daddy long legs scorpions and the mites and ticks as well as lesser known subgroups as it were a few species are of financial importance that is the bugs and ticks which transmit infections to people other creatures and plants so what these does the bugs and the ticks they transmit infections to people other creatures and plants here we have pictures showing you a number of mites soil mite inch mite and all these different types of mite these are eight legged creatures questions what is an invertebrate is it an animal without backbone is it an animal with backbone is it an archipod or is it an animal that lives in water or on land Question two, the largest group of invertebrates is the arthropod. They live on land, they have exoskeleton, they can fly and they have jointed legs or they have segmented bodies and jointed legs or they have a skeleton and segmented bodies. Which of these answers is correct? Now, question three, why do some mollusks have a shell? A, so they can live in water and on land, or B, to make it easier to find food. C, in case they lose their exoskeleton, or D, to protect their soft bodies. Which of these answers is correct? Okay, let's continue. Myropod. So think of those questions. Myropod. Any member of several closely related groups of the invertebrates, phylum, archipoda, including the extinct archipolida, extinct delopodia or millipedes, the chloropodia or centipedes, parapoda, and symphilia. The myropods are a little known group, although some 11,000 living species have been recognized. Here we have a picture of a centipede. That thing that stings you and causes you to get fever and vomiting and so on. Yes, it's a myropod. Now, most myropods are seldom seen. Some attract attention by spectacular mass migration, 
while others are found occasionally in dark corners of houses and other buildings. Certain tropical species can inflict painful bites on humans if handled or accidentally encountered. The same scorpion is one of the most dangerous myropods I know of. Okay, the primary significance of myropods is the role they play in ecological balance of forested region. In addition, their limited ability to migrate, their dependence upon stable conditions of moisture and shelter, and their general intolerance of seawater. Together with the fact that they appeared rather early in geological history and have since evolved little made the myropods important indicators of land or water relationships. They can provide useful information for understanding evolution and geographic dispersal. Because myropods are largely developed, they play an important role in the breakdown of dead vegetables material some species are primarily carnivorous. However, myropods are most abundant and diverse in tropical and temperate forests. Although some species of dilopods and an even greater number of chilopods thrive in grassland or semi-arid habitats, the others live in desert conditions. All right, now this would have brought us to the end of this lesson. For you boys and girls, let's recap. We talk about invertebrates and we say that invertebrates are almost everywhere. In fact, it's at least 95% of all the animals in the world are invertebrates. And we know that invertebrates can be found flying, swimming, crawling, floating, and provide important things to the environment and to people. But no one knows just how many different kinds of invertebrates exist, but there are millions. And we looked at archipods, and we said archipods have segmented bodies, meaning they are divided into parts. And we use a and for example, right, so archipods are the largest groups of invertebrates. They can live on land, like spiders and insects, or in water, like crayfish and crabs. Then we have insects. Insects are the largest groups of archipods. So, of course, many even fly, like mosquitoes, bees, locusts, and ladybugs. They have jointed legs or limbs to make it easier to walk. Just as you have knees for your legs and elbows for your arms. Most archipods also have an exoskeleton which is a tough outer skin or shell that protects their body. We have the creepy crawly insects. We have the three parts, which is the head, and the head, which bears the mouth parts, the eyes, and pair of antenna. Then we have the three segmented, the thorax, which usually has three pairs of legs. Then we have the many segmented abdomen, which contains the digestive, excretory, and reproductive organs. We have pictures of the eight-legged eight creatures, so, this would have brought us to the end of this session. Please ensure to research invertebrates, look up at some archipods, archinids, mollocks, and all the different types of invertebrates. Until next time, I am Miss Martina Archisemple saying stay safe. Bye.